Welcome, you guys. Dr. Grant here. And today we're going to be talking about why you're so emotional with ADHD. So diving right into it, we are going to start with five things of why we are so emotional. I'm going to talk about more of the science behind this and make sense of it all. And then, of course, towards the end, I will answer you guys' ADHD questions. So make sure to put that in the chat why I'm going over these. And also, if you have questions as we're going through each one of these steps. So the very first thing is... ADHD, we tend to be very hypersensitive, whether that is stuff with touch, sound, sight, when we tend to be more hypersensitive. So just take the example of being more sensitive to touch. When someone might be just touching, especially your child, tapping you just very lightly, they might see that as someone hitting you. That is doing it for more hypersensitivity. And so we tend to react to something like that, especially if your kid is dealing with something like that, but also sight and sound. And we get easily distracted, but also with bombarding, getting flooded with all these different, our senses being so high end, we can tend to have a higher sense of sensitivity and have higher emotions upon that, which then of course leads into more hyper, you know, attention. So it's interesting, you know, with our condition, we call it attention deficit, which I don't know if I would say that's quite accurate in a lot, in some cases, because we could also be very, be very hyper attentive to the wrong things. So very hyper attentive to sound or things that distract us that we see or touch. And when we are distracted in that way and have more of a hyper attentive to the wrong things, we end up offending other people because we get distracted. And so therefore we have more experiences of dealing with people who misunderstand us and they end up saying hurtful things. So this is also a problem when people don't understand, you know, the situations that we deal with on a regular basis. The second thing is that with ADHD, our working memory ha is impaired. And with our working memory being impaired, guess what? Emotions become too strong because of the flood of different things as far as all the emotions within the brain. And when we don't have working memory communicating back and forth, guess what? It isn't giving us information about those emotions as accurate. It might be a little slower. And so the brain connection, connectivity, carrying it back and forth is impaired. And so the info related to emotions is limited. So when it's giving information back to our brain and back and forth, then guess what? we aren't processing it as accurately as your neurotypical type of person. So then we can come across as being insensitive. So leading to be insensitive. And so people are like, why are you so insensitive? Why are you not paying attention to me? Um, and, but at the same time, when there is the flood of all these emotions, all at once, essentially, since we're very hypersensitive, it could be the opposite. We can perceive things a little bit differently where it may be more extreme than it really is because we might take things out of context, which leads into my next thing is about disapproval. Okay. So we, because I mentioned about being hyper-focused on only one thing. And so for example of this is when you're having a conversation, we can have where maybe they say one word that we hyper-focus on that one thing they said, and we don't listen to the rest of the sentence or the rest of the paragraph. So we take it out of context and then we get angry about it because that's all we're fixated on. And that becomes a problem because of the memory impairment issues of not communicating back and forth as quickly as possible. But things being said out of context and reading it out of context is we tend to have more, we look at because of having ADHD, we tend to have more disapproval. So when we have more disapproval amongst other people who think, oh, you know, he's distracted all the time, or he doesn't pay attention, or he's weird, and maybe you don't get, you know, you're out of friend groups, uh, and they kind of leave you out. So we end up having this past history that we build up, and maybe even trigger words that was bad because people make fun of us. And so we have more of those experiences than the neurotypical person where we have disapproval. And when we talk to somebody else and they say a trigger word like that, it, we fixate on that trigger word without knowing the whole context. And then we react to that person when they're like, whoa, dude, what just happened? Why, why are you, you know, jumping all over me? And it's because we're so fixated on that one trigger word. 
when we are taking things out of context. So that's the problem is, you know, we definitely have more experiences where we have disapproval, but it doesn't have to be that way. You know, we, we have to, and I'll, I'll talk about, you know, ways that we can help with this, but just a little plug in. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, if you want approval, this channel is about approving everybody with ADHD because we talk about everything about ADHD. I got ADHD, so I'm trying to create this community of all people with ADHD that need help. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, subscribe. All right, that was just my little plug-in. Sorry about that. <laughs> so next thing is, you guys heard me talk about this a lot, is looking at brain chemistry. So with brain chemistry, obviously, when they are out of balance, you're going to be more emotional than the neurotypical person. So talking about a few here, serotonin, well, if your serotonin levels are low, you're going to be more depressed, okay? And it's very common with people with HD. If they're high and elevated, you're going to be more, possibly more anxious and agitated and be more hypersensitive. Same with dopamine. Dopamine can be an issue where the fact that if you are having low levels of dopamine, you're not going to be as motivated. And if you're not going to be as motivated at the same time, you're, you can have that tendency also having low dopamine levels being more depressed. Now, when they are elevated as well, you could also be more hypersensitive because you're going to feel more anxious and agitated as well. Same with GABA, same kind of emotions go on with there, but those are kind of your big ones. And also norepinephrine and epinephrine has to do with low with stress. And so when those are out of balance as well, which is very common with people with ADHD and why we can tend to be more emotional than the neurotypical person. All right. So moving on to the next thing is hormones, okay? So typically with hormones, um, you know, especially with people with ADHD are going to be prone to more mood swings. And I see this very common with people that with ADHD, it isn't just the chemistry imbalances. It's also the fact that they also have other imbalances within their hormones, whether this has to do with thyroid, whether that has to do with estrogen, progesterone level, testosterone, DHEA levels. Um, can also begin contributive factors to make us have more mood swings, ups and downs. Now, for women, this applies more to women. Um, this is very common with women who have ADHD when they have their PMS, you know, their cycles and periods going coming around. Um, they are going to be more moody because of the fact that they have the hypersensitivity to go with it, and then the hormones being imbalanced, your moods are going to be more up and down as well. And since people with ADHD have more of a tendency with depression and anxiety, also with having thyroid issues, as well as other hormones imbalances, make our depression and anxiety even worse than the neurotypical person that might have depression or anxiety. So yeah, there is a lot going on here. And then another one is fatigue. When we have low energy, we're not going to have the motion, you know, so we're not going to have the motivation to do things. So therefore, we can lead into more of a depressed state, okay? So you might be asking, okay, what can I do as far as helping with this? How can I resolve being so emotional? Well, we got to really fix things as far as the brain chemistry, bring our brain chemistry back more into balance so that we don't have to be so hyper-emotional and so fixated on certain things. So I have a free guide in the description below. If you have not downloaded this already, it goes over what types of supplements, what types of foods to implement, what types of foods to avoid, what testing to run to be able to help with your ADHD. So download that in the description below. I hope you guys enjoy this training. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. Thanks. Bye.